death drive is what concerns me. My concern was um, about the iconicity of, of sitting in a limo and what that might, um, what kind of a signifier you you've chosen and what kind of projections that might encourage. And that was uh, worrisome for me because I'm always very attentive to the way the word gets situated or where it might seem to emerge from. And I guess I felt it as a threat to my automobility in a sense, you know. But because you you were enchanted by this idea, and I'm sure it's it's uh, an ironic decision on your part to put us in this um, what you project as a phallus, um, which would be the the ultimate emptiness, of course. So we've established the threat to my automobility and my decision to understand this drive as the death drive, which inscribes us in the repetition compulsion. And now you can hear the sirens, the police, and all the paranoia can now start pumping. So maybe you made a good decision, but we'll see. Well, let, let's essentially go to um, what Freud says. I think that would be the best we could do. I just happen to have my Freud book with me on this drive, on this death drive. One always has Freud with one. Now, what interests me about Freud and, and your work today, the work on repetition, is the problem of destructiveness, which he starts to build in beyond the pleasure principle. How could there be a drive which suggests itself to be on the side of life and nearly, but there's a necessary detour here, nearly the instinctual dimension of life? How, how can there be a drive which is full of vitality and affirmative of vitality that is then called the death drive, which would seem to be the resistance to life? So we're in that kind of resistance right here, I think between what might assert itself to be on the side of life and what resists life and goes beyond that sight and we could call with Freud and Lacan and Derrida and everyone the death drive. The death drive is what concerns me and of course I I guess we're in high gear in the death drive, even here. Now, in Beyond the Pleasure Principle, where, where he um, truly develops the question of repetition and repetition compulsion, he tells us that there's a problem, he realizes, because what was unconscious cannot necessarily become conscious merely through transferential uh, work. The patient cannot remember the whole of what is repressed in him. The whole point is that if it's repressed, how can the patient remember or bring up everything? And what he cannot remember may be precisely the essential part of it. So here you have two things going on, at least two things. The, there's still the physician's desire which is being thwarted. The physician would prefer to see the patient remembering something. But memory and as a privileged type of cognition is, is uh, experiencing a power failure, we could say, in this Freudian scene. So what happens is, rather than remembering something that belongs to the past, the patient starts repeating something. And this is the beginning of the repetition compulsion. 
So there's a compulsion to repeat, and this is more instinctual. The compulsion is even more primitive, more at our core, more primal and primitive than the pleasure principle, which it overrides. So there's something more powerful than pleasure, or the pleasure principle, which the repetition compulsion overpowers, overrides. We're still with the drive. And in fact, um, does a kind of uh, violent takeover. None of these things can have produced pleasure in the past. So the question is, why are they producing this kind of repetition if and what they're repeating was drained in the first place of pleasure. So what is being repeated is a kind of unpleasure. And in the um, analytical situation, the, the analyzon, the patient, needs to somehow is compelled, and we haven't even discussed the zwang in the compulsion, because it is a compulsion. Something is forcing the analyzon to repeat something painful. In other words, it's not just the repetition of a child saying, please read me the story again and again and again and again. No, there's something painful beyond the pleasure principle that needs to be repeated. So you have the, the figure of this uh, unwitting and relentless repetition compulsion of wounding the other without um, knowing that it's the other and not without knowing that you're being driven to do this. So these acts of destruction that destroy and are somehow driven. So this is what um, Freud wants to think about when he has in mind a compulsion to repeat. <clears throat> 